Some comics are good, but most comics are killers. They kill time, they kill imagination, and they kill the urge to read books. In the 1950s, if comics were killers, then mild-mannered publisher William M. Gaines was public enemy number one. My father had uh, been instrumental in starting comic books back in the 30s, and he had a whole stable of comics, which included The Flash and Wonder Woman and a number of others, and he sold out his entire business to DC. He then went back in business and started little comic books for children. He called the outfit Educational Comics. When Max Gaines was killed in an accident, Bill, who was planning to be a chemistry teacher, decided to concoct his own comic book formula. He changed the name to Entertaining Comics and started publishing Western, War, and Crime comics. But in 1950, editor Al Feldstein conducted a creepy experiment in an issue of Crime Patrol. We introduced the Crypt of Terror. And I, I kind of based it on what I have envisioned when I used to listen to Arch Obler's, uh Lights Out or The Witch's Tale on radio. Gaines and Feldstein quickly realized that horror could be a hit. We were so excited that we went ahead and changed the titles to Tales from the Crypt and the Vault of Horror. The Haunt of Fear soon followed, and by early 1950, the first horror comic books were selling half a million copies per issue. Russ Cochran, who's been reprinting the original EC series, was typical of the kids that got hooked on EC horror. I had about stopped reading comic books when I was uh, 14, 15 years old. I'd sort of outgrown the superhero comics, and all of a sudden I picked up an EC comic, and here were comics that were written better and drawn better than anything I'd ever seen before, and they hooked me right back in. Feldstein continued to create cover art and write stories based on Gaines' ideas. But they soon began to draw on a gruesome group of artists to bring E.C.'s tales of terror to life. Every story was written for the artist who drew it. Graham always got the dripping, rotting corpses, slimy, gooky stuff oozing out of the cellar kind of things. And Johnny Craig, who wrote his own stuff, everything was nice, clean looking, except terrible things were going on <laughs> in this beautiful, clean situation. Joe Orlando uh, could go either way. He could have a clean job or he could have an ooze job, and he did a lot of either. Orlando himself remembers the awe inspired by another EC alumnus. Jack Davis didn't sweat, and we all envied him. <laughs> that he just tossed it off, and, and, and he, just pure genius, you know. It was rumored that he could do four f complete pages a day if he wanted to, and we'd count it up. Oh, my God, he can make that much money. EC artists were among the most talented in the history of comic art. And original artwork from their horror books has sold for as much as $10,000. But the ones most responsible for EC's success may have been its nefarious trio of nightmare narrators. Oh yeah, there was the Crypt Keeper who introduced stories from the Tales from the Crypt, the Vault Keeper who did the Vault of Horror, and uh, the old witch who did the Haunt of Fear. The Galunatics went right for the jocular vein, with a combination of wicked wit and putrid puns that pushed the stories along to their gruesome conclusions. One of them even deserves credit for naming EC's most popular publication. So I think it was the Crypt Keeper who used to say, welcome to EC's Mad Mag, Tales from the Crypt. And when we all decided to do a funny book, we cut it to Mad. My favorite stories were always what I called walking corpses, which is some guy who had been done wrong and got buried, clawing their way out of the earth to take care of the guy what done him wrong. Probably my favorite story was the grim fairy tale about the king and the queen who had the little pet mice, and they fed the little mice all kinds of goodies while the people were starving. And finally, the people stormed the castle and took some half-starved rats and forced them down the mouths of the king and queen and sewed their mouths shut and stood around and cheered as the rats ate their way out of the pompous king and the pompous queen. It wasn't necessarily that good triumphed over evil because the triumph was not necessarily good. 
but something happened that 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 gave a kind of morality to it. Twisted, I must admit, but a morality. And the whole idea was like to scare people and uh, scare little kids. And the more disgusting the stories were, the more we laughed. But not everyone appreciated the joke. And in 1953, a Senate subcommittee convened to find out if comics created juvenile delinquents. My name is William Gaines. I was the first publisher in these United States to publish horror comics. I'm responsible. I started them. I don't know if you remember Mayor Walker, who once said, I never knew a woman to be ruined by a book. <laughs> and I never knew a child to be ruined by a comic book. It's just utter nonsense. We were really the most shocked people in the world when we discovered that we were these terrible people who were causing juvenile delinquency in America, which is what happened and what put us out of business. The controversy helped kill the horror comics, but E.C.'s gore stories wouldn't stay buried. Ah! Tales from the Crypt and the Vault of Horror became movies in the 70s, and reprints of all the E.C. classics are now available in bookstores and on newsstands. It's showtime! Ah! And thanks to HBO, the Crypt Keeper himself is popping up on cable. From the We've been very fortunate to have very talented people direct them and be in them and do the special effects for them. So the, the shows really came out very well. We have uh, about 500 crypt stories, so we can make these for a long time. Well, as long as I don't wind up on the cutting room floor. <laughs> Vault of Horror, The Haunt of Fear, and Tales from the Crypt have been revolting readers now for nearly 40 years, and the macabre message remains the same. Well, I hope that uh, they all learned how to uh, whistle when they pass the cemetery. <laughs> you know, and uh, we still believe that corpses are coming back and getting even. Here to accept the award for EC Comics it is publisher William M. Gaines. Beautiful. Beautiful. I proudly accept this great honor on behalf of my unbelievably talented staff of editors, writers, and artists who were vilified in the early 50s by a Senate subcommittee on juvenile delinquency and by other magazine publishers who claimed we had destroyed the youth of America. It has taken almost 40 years for our work to be recognized. <laughs> I thank my dear friend Lyle Stewart for helping me through the bad days. I thank my dear friend Russ Cochran, who has kept EC Comics alive all these years. I thank Joel Silver and his incredible group of movie makers who have made Tales from the Crypt the hottest and most successful original programming in box home box office history. Finally, I thank the board of directors of the Horror Hall of Fame for this delightful vindication of our efforts. <laughs>